Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Science, Science Bridge webinar series, uh, You Can Do This. And today my guest is uh, my friend, Tonette Labuskachny. She received her master's degree in medicinal plant science at the University of Pretoria. And after that, she landed her lecture position at Pearson Institute of Higher Education, where she was teaching part-time. And as soon uh, after, she joined the University of Cape Town, where she did uh, her PhD in immunology. And Tonette is currently uh, working as associate medical writer at Medical Communication and Agency, which is actually international agency, but she is still working here in South Africa. So welcome, Tonette. Thank you so much, Martina. Thank you for inviting me. And thanks for the nice introduction. <laughs> All of that sounds so long ago. <laughs> well, some of it might be, some of it is current. So let's just dive into your background and uh, where actually um, you started, where your passion for science started. Well, I guess my passion for science um, started at a very young age. I was always very curious about how things worked. Um, and then I, I actually initially wanted to be a psychiatrist. Um, so I wanted to do medicine. And the first six months of um, the, the curriculum is the same for BSc than for medicine. And I didn't apply for medicine at first because I couldn't decide what I wanted to be. So I applied for the BSc course and thought I could then maybe transition. And then it ended up that I just really enjoyed the science and I stuck with it. Um, and I did a BSc in human physiology, genetics and psychology. Uh, and then after that, I worked um, at a little lab for a short time and realized that I was, I still wanted to go into the med medicine side of it, more, more clinical things if I could. And then I went into medicinal plant sciences, did my honors and my masters, um, focusing on tuberculosis, med medicinal plants um, for, for tuberculosis, um, all the plants that traditional healers use in South Africa. So validating that. Um, and I fell in love with tuberculosis and how the immune system and, and TB work together and how they like, evolve and how some people get sick and some people don't. And then I pursued, pursued my PhD from there. So everything kind of just rolled into the other. And I guess the same with this job that I've landed now as a med medical writer. It was more the situation, you know, COVID. Um, and it was an ideal opportunity because I could work from home and um, still use all the, the experience that I've gained through, through my master's and my PhD. Uh, a mixture of different things. I've got a mixture of, of chemistry and immunology. And the only thing that I did lack was the clinical side of it, which is very relevant for this job. Um, but yes, that's basically everything just rolled into each other. And, and now I'm here. Yeah. Well, that's, that sounds very interesting because it seems that your career is a journey. It's not one destination that you thought of a couple of years ago and uh, it just evolved and you progressed and grew into it. Yes, definitely. I think and it's a very good way of seeing it. You should never, I mean, planning is good. <laughs> it's always good to plan, but things seem to happen and you should never... Um, take for granted the experience that you've gained every single you and no one can take that away from you either so you'll you'll realize later in any role that you that you have that you're using things that you learned before and how helpful it is and you never thought then that it, it would actually be beneficial no that's that sounds absolutely true so i just wanted to ask you now how you actually landed this job that you have now because it's international agency COVID was well is um but 2020 was quite miserable because of the halt on the job market and it would seem that it's quite uh, dire out there when you're leaving but but you managed to find the job so how that happened well um i worked on my cv I worked on it very hard and <laughs> made it beautiful and tried to um, put in all my soft skills 
And it took a while. I must say it's, it's hard, especially coming from academia, because you don't really realize what your, what your soft skills are. Um, and it's difficult to not just write about what you've presented and which papers you've published and which grants you've received. You have to write about how capable you are in, in, in different um, spheres. And that took a while. And um, I eventually sent my polished <laughs> non-academic CV to many places. Um, LinkedIn, of course, was the best platform. I, I must say, I think I um, got most of my interviews and opportunities from LinkedIn. Um, so I would recommend that people work on their, their LinkedIn profile. Uh, but the resume and the CV, it is very important. And it's good to um, tailor your, your CV according to that specific job. So have your general one with everything in, and then according to the job, then you, you fine tune it. Um, and it's good to have a short CV and just like a one or two page, and then have a resume with everything in specifically for that. And then also um, a cover letter. A cover letter is very important. And that you should also um, tailor for, for your specific audience or the, the people that you're interviewing to. Um, and that's, yes, I think that's how I, uh, how I got the job. Yeah. So, so you were applying uh, for this particular company through LinkedIn and uh, you clicked apply because you can apply now. That's the specific feature that LinkedIn has. And what happened next? Did you get email back or did they call you back? It was a very long process, especially with this agency. Um, so their recruitment, their um, uh, HR person <laughs> contacted me and said I'm on the short list and now I have to write a test so they sent me a whole writing assignment um, and I completed the assignment it had it had very um, strict you know this is how it should be and try to follow this but then it was also kind of open um, and it was a good it was a good test I think that was their way of weaning some people out um, so I wrote the test and then uh, another person came back and said, um, well, the, 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 the HR person still was in contact. And then I was interviewed by another person from the company. And then from there, they said, OK, I'm on the list. And then from there, they made me have an interview with other people in the company that I might possibly work with. So all in all, I had three interviews and um, the test and then eventually they said, great, you're hired. <laughs> and um, still, actually, we um, are in the process. It's three or four months down the line now. So it's still very new. Agency life overall, very new. Medical communications, very new. Um, but the, the contract at first is, is freelance, seeing that they're an um, international company. They don't actually have the labor law and the contracts in place for the South African entity. Um, so they're starting up the South African entity. I was one of the first three that they um, uh, appointed. And I think we've grown, we are 10 people in South Africa now. There's another person being um, appointed also in Cape Town. So we're gonna be two in Cape Town, which is exciting. Um, and uh, so still we actually don't have um, the contracts that say that we are full, <laughs> full salaried um, employees, mm -hmm. so still on a semi-freelance um, contract. And things like that's difficult to navigate as well, coming from academia, because you don't really understand all the industry terms and um, yeah, industry, that, but basically business acumen. It's something that we, we as graduates from academia, we lack completely. And if, if that's something that I could um, definitely tell help graduates is spruce up on your your business business sense and your business acumen and it's just normal things like um even abbreviations that they use while speaking try and see in the specific field that you want to go in how do they talk what abbreviations do they use and if you can try to find a mentor and just speak to them and ask them what their day-to-day -day is like um and yeah I, th I think that would definitely have helped. It's something that I would have um, find very found beneficial if somebody could help me with all the business side of it. Well, something that you just touched upon. So finding a mentor, can you tell us 
um, more about your day-to-day -day life. How does it look like? Because you're saying you are not full-time employee, you're a freelancer. Um, no, so it's full time. It's full time. Um, the hours is completely full time and quite busy. Every hour is full. Um, it's just the contract itself is on a freelance basis because um, the South African entity hasn't been established. So it's more legal. It's more legal thing to say. So I still need to send in an invoice to um, bill my hours, even though I am actually a full time employee. Um, so it's, yeah, it's small things like that that you also need to navigate when, when you're going into industry. Um, usually if you're going to an agency that is in South Africa, all those things will be in place and you'll have a permanent contract, depending, maybe you want to be freelance and then that's also fine. Um, but so my every day today is very much just sitting in front of the computer, which I never really thought I would do, coming from a lab and being from the one, you know, walking to the hospital in this lab and in that lab and constantly being on your feet and being busy with your hands and being in the, um, being busy in the animal unit, you know how it goes. And now I just sit and write um, and I work on manuscripts and I work on Congress proceedings like posters and presentations. And um, I'm in meetings quite often and advisory boards, <laughs> workshops, so it's, it's a little bit of everything, but overall it's writing where you take another person's data and you write about it, which is so strange as a scientist because you're the one that usually generates the data and then you write about it. Um, and it's very controlled. There's a lot of fact checking, quality checking, making sure that everything that's being said can be back traced and it's very finicky and it's time consuming. Um, so there's a lot of, yes, fact checking and quality checking. And it's one of those jobs that you can't do with just one screen. You have to have three screens because everything's been cross-checked and yeah, that's, <laughs> you kind of feel like you're, you're um, in, in the matrix. <laughs> I know it might be maybe touching upon some sensitive issues, but where the data comes from? Is it from pharmaceutical companies or is it from research? Yes, so a lot of the clients of the agency um, are big pharma, but also um, some small biotech companies. But at the moment, it, it depends. It depends who, who your clients are. So I, I work with two accounts. The one is an oncology um, account, and then the other one is HIV um, therapeutics and vaccines. Well, not HIV, it's more pediatric vaccines. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Some of the other writers work on um, dermatology accounts or even on um, beauty. Like there's a lot of um, like Botox and things like that. Or, um, I mean, you name it. Uh, name it you can write about it <laughs> yeah, of course anything related to science field i guess yes. in broad terms yes. yeah um, and it's interesting because a lot of it is it's um the clinical um most of the papers that we write are about the the clinical studies which is another thing that's very new coming from basic science and um, the way you write about the patients and the subjects and when to call them subjects and when to call them patients and the confidence intervals and the statistics around it. Um, it's a lot to take in at first. Um, and I mean, I'm still taking it in <laughs> and it's still new, but it, it, it's, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's, it's nice being able to do a little bit of different things. And, and in the same day, I'll be working on vaccines and therapeutics for either oncology and for different indications. It won't just be for breast cancer, it might be for gastric cancer and um, non-small cell lung carcinoma. And then the other moment I'm working on pediatric vaccines. So it's, it's a bit of a shift sometimes. You have to make your brain, you know, <laughs> flexible and <laughs> think in a certain way. Yes, yeah, because they're all so different. And that's what makes it a little bit more exciting than just sitting and writing. And I get to talk to the designers, um, on how to help me do figures. And um, we also have graphics department. So if we, if we want 3D models and animations to be done. So that's, that's also pretty cool. That can be nice. But overall, it, it's, it can be, it's a lot of 
finicky, tedious, meticulous work. And um, you have to have an eye for detail if you want to go into um, medical writing or medical communications. Um, but that's not all it is. There's also writing um, for the regulatory bodies, so about the medications um, or, or even the, the leaflets that go into the, the medication. Some people work on that. So it's very broad, um, but I quite enjoy doing the uh, manuscript side of it, seeing that I'm accustomed to it and I've done it before. Um, yeah. So is there any um, type of training that you need to take? Because I believe that uh, as a scientist, you're used to, as you said, manuscripts. But when it comes to writing leaflets, that's going to be a completely different ball game. So Yes, but even the manuscripts, uh, it's a completely different ball game. It's, there's a very specific way of doing it and the different rounds that um, you have to go through. Um, and a lot of people that have input and you have to take in all the comments from so many different people and... Um, no, it's, it's a long process. It's very different to what, what we're used to. Um, but yes, now there is training. The, the very nice thing about this agency is that um, they have a graduate program. So once you get out of just finishing your, your a BSc degree, doesn't even necessarily have to be an honors or a master's or a PhD, which is preferable. And um, you can do an internship with them for just a short while, or you can do the complete um, graduate program where they offer training every single day of the week. Um, and seeing that I'm not technically a graduate, but they, they treated the South African entity very much like um, people coming, coming into, because we're so new to it. And I mean, we didn't even know that such a thing existed as a me medical writer. <laughs> um, so they, they um, allowed us to do the training as well. And it was quite intense. The first two months um, was very training intensive, about nine hours a week of training, um, which is fantastic. There's not a lot of places that allow you to work and train at the same time. And they, they cover the costs of the training. And most of the training is in-house, which helps because um, you get to know a lot of the people and who to ask for what. Um, yeah. Now that sounds very interesting. So uh, I believe that your background, that you have quite a broad background, and your trip goes from the, the medicinal plant side to TB and so on, that gives you a lot of um, useful information and a lot of uh, things that you can back up um, for your work day to day with. Yes, I think I, it does help. Um, I think I mentioned that during my honors and my masters, I did a lot of, I guess you could say it's chemistry. So. Um, mass spectrometry and HPLC, and that that helped me to write around um, the new drugs on the market and how they were tested, and reading all the um, what, how would you call it, the protocols that the, the the companies would send us to base our um, the manuscripts on. So it's easier to read because I understand that background, and then for the immunology, uh, that background definitely helps for the the vaccines. And for the oncology, the oncology was the, the was it's still the most difficult for me. And um, there's a, a lot of jargon that I don't understand, and it's very clinical, um, and that's still a bit difficult for me to wrap my head around. But it helps that you know how to do research, having done an honors or a masters or a PhD. If you can do research, then this you'll be okay. <laughs> Just knowing how to sift through a lot of information and taking out the important bits and then writing a story around it. That is the, the most important thing for this job really is putting a story around, generating a story that, that makes sense and ultimately is helpful. Okay, okay. So, um, so the final question, Tanet, like uh, what would be your advice for soon-to-be graduates students who are about to take their CV and go into the big world? Okay, well, if they've made the, the choice to leave academia and go into the big world, um, first, good. <laughs> it's not for everyone. Um, academia is great and I miss it. I miss that flexibility, I must say. Um, but it can be scary, um, but just persevere. It's it's very good to 
keep on sending that CV out. The first few ones that you're going to send out, they're not necessarily going to come back with a positive um, feedback or at all. Some people just never get back to you. And I hate, I hate that that's the worst. <laughs> but eventually um, you, you get better at it and you know how to tweak your CV and you'll, you'll find that that next step in your path um, it won't be necessarily the the end the end of everything it will definitely be the beginning of your career journey and use platforms like Sandsbridge. i mean i i commend you for doing this it's such a wonderful platform and i wish i, I had all this information coming out of um, university because we weren't really informed of everything out there and all the possibilities for people who do specifically um, health sciences and natural science research. You think you just have to stay in academia and keep on doing research and eventually become, uh, you know, a, a lecturer or it's, and there's so many things out there and it's a really good platform. So use platforms like, like Science Bridge, um, read a lot and find out what your soft skills are and mix your yeah you know, your skills your hard skills and your your experience with your personality to find something that you like if you want to work at home like like me <laughs> something like a uh, medical writer is a really good choice um but if you want to be more hands-on and work in a research and development lab that you, you can do that if there's so many options out there and um, and martina has so many of the answers so Stay tuned. <laughs> yes, stay tuned, definitely. We are coming up with more and more answers for you, definitely. And uh, somewhere where everybody can go somewhere and all the soft skills and all your personalities can fit somewhere. So it's not like there is only one way for everybody. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you so much, Tonette, for your time and for all the knowledge that you shared with us um and all the best of luck with your busy work and all the promotions and establishing the unit here in south africa for our future students who might be joining you yes yeah definitely and if, if anybody um anybody contacts you and they want more information you can you can send them on to me and i'll gladly chat to anyone that's interested okay Thanks i'll so put your linkedin profile in the description of this video so that they can reach out to you for linkedin Amazing. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.